okay here we go let's um go into uh the great hall but not literally of course <laughs> um look into what it says about the great hall and um what it says is <clears throat> that the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So you have the kings of the earth and the inhabitants of the earth all um, committing fornication with this great whore. Now that puts um, just about everybody in the whole world in bed with the whore. So somewhere down the line, if not every day or sometime or other, or if not every week, every year, um, people are in bed with the whore. Now that's quite a strong accusation, if you like, to suggest that your um, friends, your relatives or anyone you know, including yourself, is in bed with the whore. <coughs> so it says, um, again, to make this clear, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So this whore appears to be getting people drunk just like they do. And in so getting people drunk, they then go to bed with the whore. So um, who is this um, great whore? Now the um, the angel comes to St. John and there, there came one of the, this is um, chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials. That's the seven vials of the wrath of God that it talks about in, a, in another chapter. It turns out there were seven angels pouring out these vials, these bowls, if you like, of God's wrath upon the world right at the very end time. Well, one of these angels that was pouring out these um, vials of God's wrath upon the people of the earth, God's judgments upon the world right at the very end, comes to St. John and he says, there come one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So she's a great whore and she sits on many waters. Now you get the interpretation of what these um, waters were down here in uh, there in chapter 17, same chapter, verse 15. <clears throat> so the same angel speaking, and he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, right? So she sits on these waters, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So she, in this sense, is the queen. <clears throat> a bit like a queen bee, I guess, really. And she has all of these um, workers, worker bees, working for her. And um, going to bed with her, as it says. I'm only saying what it says, because all the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her <clears throat> now it says that again um, here talking about the kings of the earth to make that clear again now uh, in uh, chapter 18 verse 3 for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication it says here now, I take it to mean that the wrath of her fornication is her wars. So this great queen, who's a whore, who the kings of the earth are um, going to bed with, the inhabitants of the earth are also going to bed with this whore, and um, she gets the inhabitants of the earth drunk. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath, of her fornication. So the wrath of her fornication is her wars. So she goes to war in order to acquire um, this wine, the wine of her wrath, the wrath of her fornication. 
and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Now there's a clue right there, her delicacies. The merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her um, delicacies. Now don't forget this is all symbolic. So it, the um, book of Revelation here is um, using the symbolism of a great whore that sits uh, on many waters, that sits on many people. In fact, all of the inhabitants of the earth, she's their queen. So it's natural to assume that she, like a queen bee, if you like, they go to work for her. So who is and what is this great whore? <clears throat> and it goes on. And the woman, it says, another verse here, chapter uh, verse 18, chapter 17. And the woman, which thou sawest, is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So now we're getting close to who she is. She's symbolised as a whore. And now it tells you what the symbolism is all about, that she's a great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So reigneth over the kings of the earth in particular. You might think the king is the king in your land, being the president. Or in our land, the prime minister is the um, top dog here, the king, so to speak, except for he's called a prime minister or we have a queen here. But in every country now, you largely have prime ministers and presidents and what have you, but they are the kings. But there's someone who rules over the kings. And uh, in the book of Revelation, it calls her the Whore of Babylon, <clears throat> and it also calls her a great city. So here she is in her symbolic form. So um, this angel, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, this angel is saying to John, that sitteth upon many waters. So she sat on all the inhabitants of the whole world, including the kings. She's the queen. She's top. And everyone else um, she sits on. So she rules and reigns over the whole world, so to speak. And sits on them, suggesting she oppresses them. <clears throat> so she sits on them, therefore she oppresses everyone. Right. <clears throat> so he carried me away in the spirit, verse 3, into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So she's also sat on this beast that has seven heads and uh, ten horns. And this is also symbolic of great world empires. So she sat on these waters, and she sat on uh, great world empires down through time. And the Bible in particular underlines seven great world empires being Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Media, Persia, a dual empire, Greece, Rome and Antichrist. So seven great world empires and the Antichrist world empire hasn't come yet. So at first, actually, this um, great hall will also sit on the back of the great of the um, Antichrist world empire, <clears throat> but something changes in the um, in the um, Antichrist world empire. Right now, let's get the um, symbolic picture of this woman, this hall. This mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, an abomination of the earth, abominations of the earth. So the angel carries John away, so he carried me away in the spirit. So John is now going further and further into this spirit trip that he's on. He's on a spirit trip, he's sat on the island of Patmos, and he sees a door open in heaven. And thus his spirit trip begins. He first hears a voice saying unto him, come up hither. And immediately he says he was in the spirit. 
So suddenly he's in the spirit of God and he's moving around in this vision, in the book of Revelation, in this vision, like moving around a uh, cinema with different, um, seven different films showing in that cinema and um, John appears to be going in the different rooms and seeing uh, whatever film is on there. That's pretty um, basic, but no doubt a multi-dimensional vision um, and John moving around in the spirit. So it's a spiritual trip that he's on. He's on earth writing all of this down while he's moving around dimensionally in this vision. Writing it down on her on earth and yet seeing it in the spirit. So you kind of picture him sat there with his book and his pen. And he's maybe looking out into um, outer space kind of thing. And uh, he's getting all of this, um, all of these angels appearing to him. A door opened in heaven and a voice saying unto him, come up hither and I'll show thee things which must be hereafter. So it's all about the future. So John's seeing all of these visions and he's writing it all down, seeing the vision, writing it all down. Or did he see, well, he actually sees the vision and writes it down because it tells you in this book he's about to write something. But the angel says to him uh, not to write this particular um, thing here. He was about to write something that seven thunders uttered, if I remember correctly. But the angel tells him not to write it down. So he's clearly getting this vision while sat down and yet moving around in this vision um, dimensionally by what he calls travelling in the spirit. So um, the angel, um, so he, the angel, carried me away in the spirit. So don't forget, he looks up at this door in heaven and uh, he, was in, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, it said originally. And then Jesus appears to him and Jesus then tells him that he sent and signified this uh, book of Revelation, these visions, through an angel. And then this angel takes him on this spirit trip. And whilst on this spirit trip, it's as if this angel then um, passes him over to other angels who's also in this spirit trip. So quite uh, multi-dimensional and all very real because these angels are not uh, merely visions. They actually um, exist. So he's talking to um, different angels in this vision. And the one that's dealing with the vision was once a uh, departed saint. So the angel who's dealing with the whole thing says to him, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets. So this angel that's taking John around this spiritual trip um, into the book of Revelation was indeed a departed saint. But now um, Saint John is in the hands of one of these angels that poured out the wrath of God in the last days in this vision. <clears throat> and this angel is telling him, um, come with me, kind of thing. So he, carried, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. <clears throat> and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So she sat on this beast symbolic of the seven great world empires of man right up until the antichrist world empire of the last days but what's more interesting to us here is the um the ten kings are interesting too but in verse four it gives you the symbolic description of the woman of the whore and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, right? Having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now that's the cup. But the woman herself was arrayed in purple and scarlet colour and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Now this is the woman in uh, in this is the great city that reigns over the kings of the earth in symbolic form. 
So God is symbolizing this great city that reigns over the kings of the earth and the inhabitants of the earth, even. As being um, a woman was a, uh, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colour and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. <clears throat> now, if you go over the next page, well, that was um, Revelation seventeen four. You'll see the um, same symbolism again, but this time we're in um, chapter eighteen, verse sixteen. It describes, it gives the same um, symbolism, but now describes the whore, the woman, as a city. <clears throat> and, um, and it says, and, and, uh, verse 16, and saying, alas, alas, that great city, right? So the angel is talking about the judgments of God that's going to come down upon the whore eventually when God actually destroys the whore of Babylon. And it says, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in what? In fine linen. Now, this is the same symbolism here. Clothed in fine linen, and yet we're talking about a city. So the woman is a city. The woman is that, that the woman that thou sawest, it says in, in chapter 17, verse 18, and the woman that thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now we've got, we've seen her in her symbolic form as a woman, as a great whore, and she's symbolized as having a woman arrayed in, arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And now you have the same um, description here, except we're talking about not a woman, but a city, because the woman is that great city. Saying, alas, alas, that great city that was arrayed, that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And now you have a city with the same um, description here, clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. So that's 1816. Now go back to um, Revelation um, verse, um, chapter 17, verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colour and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. <clears throat> so the next same verse, clothed in fine linen, and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls describing the city that reigns over the kings of the earth and over the inhabitants of the earth. And this woman, in a symbolic form, is sat on many waters, many waters symbolic of many people of the earth. The whore sit of, um, be safe unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So everybody on the earth, this whore, is sat upon, oppressing. And um, she's symbolic of that great city <coughs> that rules over the kings of the earth and the inhabitants of the earth. And this great city oppresses all the people of the earth, right? So the whore is a great city that is oppressing all of the people of the earth and she's symbolized as um, being clothed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. And in her city um, form, she's the same, was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, right? So it's the great city that reigns over the kings of the earth, and the kings, no doubt, rule over the people of the earth. So it's the whore of Babylon that sits on many waters, sits on many peoples, nations, and tongues. Just about everybody on earth she sat on, she rules over. It's the city that rules over everybody in the whole world. So what you have is the worldwide city system of materialism that rules over this whole world 
and everybody in the whole world is in bed with this whore. In other words, they're in bed with materialism, they're in bed with this great city that rules over the kings of the earth, and don't forget the great city is um, somewhat symbolised here as being clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. <clears throat> so let's see if that um, symbolism plays out again. So it's saying that there's a great city that rules over the kings and the inhabitants of the earth that oppresses them. And that the whole um, world, every person in the whole world, is in bed with this great whore. In other words, they're in bed with this materialistic, capitalistic um, city, this worldwide city system that rules over everyone in this whole world, the kings from the top down to the bottom. And you'll find that the same symbolism um, comes out again here. And where it talks of the merchants of the earth, uh, when this whore of Babylon is destroyed, the merchants of the earth, it says in verse 11 here, chapter 18, verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, right, when she's destroyed. For no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Now it's the merchants that are um, weeping here and mourning over her because she's been destroyed. So if God was destro to destroy this great city that reigns over the kings and the inhabitants of the earth, the first ones to mourn here are the merchants. The merchants are mourning really the most over here. It, it says in the book of Revelation chapter 18 verse 11, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. So we have a great city, and we have these merchant men, and no no man's buying their merchandise any more. So if no man is buying their merchandise any more, their idols, in other words, the materialistic idols that they sell in their shops in the worldwide city system of materialism, down every high street you have all of these idols that people go to buy, like at the end of a working week. They largely go there on a Saturday afternoon um, and buy all of these different idols. So materialism, that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth, and um, sits on nations, multitudes, languages and tongues, oppresses all the people of the earth. <clears throat> so she's symbolised as a whore, she's a great city, and uh, the merchants, when God destroys her eventually, the merchants are the ones who appear here to be the first to weep over her, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man, buy their merchandise anymore. So the merchant men are the big businessmen, the big multinational corporations that produce um, all of this idolatry and materialism, that take this idolatry and materialism to the high streets and then sell them to the world. So the great city, the great multi national corporations, the um, great worldwide city system that rules over kings and the inhabitants of the earth. God destroys that. God smashes this great system in the end. In the end, there's going to be such a massive, massive um, crash of everything that there's going to be some kind of a first strike on some um, grey epicentre kind of thing, this um, whore of Babylon that sits upon the inhabitants of the earth, who the kings of the earth are committing fornication with, and are therefore in bed with she, reigning over um, them. So it's the multinational corporations, the worldwide city system of materialism, that rules here. 
and uh, she symbolizes a whore. A whore, that really means she's a city, and a city has to have wealth, so and idols to sell. And that wealth is largely um, produced by also all of the slaves that were for Mystery Babylon the Great, she being their queen. And um, the merchant men are like the pimps that sell her to the world, that get the world drunk with advertising and everything else, that incite the inhabitants of the earth and the kings of the earth to go to war in order to acquire more and more wealth. So, um, and the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So her wars is what helps produce all of this wealth. So the, so the merchant men become rich by um, producing all of this wealth through going to war in order to keep this worldwide city system going. And like I just said, the whore is symbolised as being clothed in fine linen. Um, where are we now? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colour and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. So that's the woman in her city form here. And um, where are we now? A great city that was clothed in fine linen purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Now, when God destroys the whore, right, destroys this great city, this great worldwide city system of uh, materialism that's run by the multinational corporations, the first ones to weep over her are the merchant men. Now, if you look down here in um, Revelation chapter 18, verse 12, verse 11, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Right? So they run the big cities, and no man's buying their merchandise any more, because God has smashed, destroyed. Um, there's been some kind of a first strike uh, in, for one hour, so greater riches, it says, has come to naught. And now the first ones to weep are going to be these great men, these merchant men. Her merchants, it says, were the great men of the earth. So the great men of the earth, the merchant men, the multinational corporations rule and reign over the kings and the kings are in bed with the whore. They're in bed with materialism and multinational corporations and it's the multinational corporations that rule over the kings of the earth. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her when God destroys this worldwide city system of capitalism, money worship, mammon worship, whore worship, materialism worship, idol worship. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Now verse 12. And the mer and now look at the symbolism here. So no man buyeth the merchandise anymore of these multinational corporations um, that are sold to the world through these worldwide city system that they create. And through all these wars where they acquire more and more wealth, the wrath of the whore. Four nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of, of her fornication. She's in bed with the kings and the people of the earth. And the kings of the earth have, um, have committed fornication with her. So they go along with all these wars. These multinational corporations decide they need a war out there, let's say, in Libya. They want to take out Libya. And you'll have these kings of the earth that are in sight in the inhabitants of the earth to agree and go to war with Libya. That's all a good thing to support this war. We want a war against Iraq. The multinational corporations decide to go to war with Iraq. And uh, the kings of the earth incite the inhabitants of their countries to go along with the wrath of the whore, with the wrath of these multinational corporations, with the wrath of these merchant men. Don't forget she's symbolic of the great cities that reign over the kings of the earth, that reign over the inhabitants of the earth, and it's the merchant men, her merchants, it says, 
were the great men of the earth and by her sorceries, by her witchcraft, in other words, through the Illuminati, through the witchcraft of the Illuminati, um, all nations are deceived. So the, um, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her when God finally destroys her right at the very end of the, uh, of the days here on earth, right at the very end times. For no man buyeth their merchandise any more. So verse 12. What, what is her merchandise? Now look at the symbolism here. That was born out when we described the whore of Babylon. Clothed in fine linen. Um, and purple and scarlet. Decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Now we have the, the, um, the merchant men. The multinational corporations now weeping. Over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Let's see if the symbolism plays out yet again. Think of the great multinational corporations. Think of the worldwide city system of materialism. And think of these kings of the earth in bed with luxury. That they, uh, the multinational corporations buy these kings. They, um, they're like pimps and they kind of... Um, sell that or give the whore to uh, them they go to bed with the horse much like when jesus went to the top of that great and high mountain and the devil showed um jesus all the kingdoms of the world all the riches and all the power thereof in a sense he was showing jesus mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and he says to jesus all the all this will i give you i'll give you the whore of babylon if you'll bow down and worship me. Well, every king of the earth would no doubt have gone to that great and high mountain somewhere down the line, and the devil would have said to them, go to bed with my whore, here's my whore, go to bed with her, and uh, then I'll, I'll give you all these riches and wealth and money and luxuries, in fact. So, um, worship me and I'll give you all of these um, luxuries of wealth and materialism. In other words, I'll give you the whore. And so you have the kings of the earth that are in bed with luxuries and materialism, uh, with the big city, with the merchant men, and therefore are in bed with the whore in pursuit of happiness. In that film they brought out in America, The Pursuit of, pursuit of Happiness, Happiness being luxury, wealth, and money, mammon worship. So um, the merchant of the and the worked merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her when God destroys her. Right, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Let's see if the symbolism plays out here. Verse twelve: the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen, and purple, and silk, and scarlet. Now, where have I heard that before? From one house of great riches has come to naught. Um, now there, uh, let's see, clothed in fine linen, and purple, and scarlet, and decked with gold, and precious stones, and pearls, right? So no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. The multinational corporations, no one's buying their merchandise anymore because God has destroyed the worldwide city system once and for all. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, same symbolism, and of pearls and fine linen, linen, they're more literal now. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet, same symbolism. But it elaborates, and all of thigh and wood. Now, this is all luxuries. These are the luxuries that um, seduces the kings of the earth to go to bed with the whore. So every king on earth, every prime minister on earth, every president on earth has been bought, has been bought, has been seduced, is going to bed with the whore. And the whore is kind of um, given to them via the merchantmen. The pimps and <clears throat> the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, all of these things you can get down the high street, <clears throat> and the pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet 
and all lanthion um, wood, so precious wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, so precious ornaments and what have you no doubt made of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, so um, nicely carved wood that people use to decorate their houses with and stuff like that, or they might make a nice throne to sit on for, for whoever. And a brass, and iron, and marble, so um, artifices of iron and brass, like tubo cane and brass and iron that you turn into technology and everything else, all um, down the high street, all um, part of the worldwide city system. And marble, all nicely carved marble that people use to decorate their palaces or, or their great houses or their mansions or, or whatever. And cinnamon and, and odours, so all these, um, and ointments to put in your bath, to put on your face, to put under your arms, to powder your nose with all of these ointments that people are into and buy, all down the high street, food, cinnamon, spices and odours and ointments and frankincense, nice things to make your nice luxury houses all smell nice and wine and oil, where have we heard wine and oil before that's symbolic of the elite? The rider of the black horse is uh, has a pair of scales in his hand, a measure of wheat for a penny, and two measures of barley for a penny, so pennies for the poor man. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. So the oil and the wine, symbolic again of the elite. So, and wine and oil here, um, symbolic of the elitists who uh, run these great, um, these big cities, who sell materialism to the world. Uh, that tell us the, that happiness is through seeking luxury and materialism. And um, the kings in particular attain to this luxury and materialism, whereas it's largely pennies for the poor, the, um, the, the, um, the merchant man that sits on the black horse. A voice is heard from the throne of God saying a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny, so pennies just for wheat and barley for the poor man. See thou hurt not the oil and the wine, so the rich and the powerful and the elitists um, end up with all of the luxury and all of the wealth, and the poor man ends up with pennies. And this is the pursuit of happiness on earth, that we can pursue this happiness in pursuing the whore, in pursuing materialism, in pursuing all of these luxuries and then uh, we'll find happiness in uh, committing fornication with the whore as God puts it. So all the whole list of idols here that the elitists in particular sell to the world through their multinational corporations that in particular the kings of the earth um, it rules over the great city that rules over the kings of the earth and the kings of the earth committed fornication with all of these luxuries, this luxurious lifestyle, whereby they sell their soul to the devil and to these elitists, really, and to Mystery Babylon the Great. And cinnamon and odours and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots, that's cars. Don't forget back then in those days, they'd have had horses to ride around on. So and sheep and horses and chariots. And now we've got cars. And right down the bottom here, and slaves and souls of men. This is what every king on earth goes to bed with when they go to bed with the whore, in that they go to bed with all, the, all of these luxuries and they have all of these slaves and souls of men working um, for them, but largely working for the whore, for the queen, and therefore slaves and souls of men um, that the elitists are um, taking um, for the devil in seducing the world into worshipping materialism. In this, they seduce the world into worshipping the whore, in other words, they seduce the world by a whore into selling their soul, into selling their body and soul to the devil in worship and service to materialism 
and therefore worship and service to the devil who who really sets up this whore in order to, to seduce mankind into worshipping and serving the devil. So the bottom line in all this materialism is, um, as it says here, verse 13, and slaves and souls of men. <clears throat> so the devil set up this worldwide materialistic system through the merchantmen, and it's the merchantmen, the elitists, that have ruled the world through these multinational corporations and the big city that reigns over the kings of the earth, that reigns over the inhabitants of the earth, that sits on many waters, therefore sits on the nations, languages and tongues and peoples of the whole world in ruling over them. So the whore of Babylon, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, is materialism, the worldwide city system, multinational corporations who work together with the whore in producing all of this wealth and turning um, all of these um, materials here into idols, merchandise of gold, turning gold into idols, and silver, turning silver into idols, and precious stones, turning them into idols, necklaces, rings and such like, and pearls, and fine linen, all turned into idols, clothes, and purple and silk, all lovely clothes that you can wear that can, can all become idolatry and scarlet, like precious and um, luxurious clothes to wear. And all fine wood, all nicely decorated and carved wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron, so, so um, technology and everything else. And marble, all, all of this luxuries the um, pursuit of happiness here, really, and luxur a luxurious lifestyle that the elitists um, use to seduce the kings into serving them and therefore into serving the whore. And the bottom line of this is, as it says here, slaves, verse 13, and souls of men. In other words, all of this materialism that they set up for the multinational corporations the worldwide city system is all about taking a person's um, soul, getting you to um, worship and serve them, body and soul. This is what they're after, your body and your soul through all of this materialism. So um, in short, that's what the uh, that's what mystery Babylon the Grey um, really does symbolize materialism, multinational corporations, that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth, that that woman the whore who sits on many waters, who sits on um, peoples, nations, and tongues, and all of the inhabitants of the earth. So um, that's it. That's the whore of Babylon. She simply is that great worldwide city system of materialism that rules over the kings and the peoples of the earth. So praise Jesus.